Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you. Shalom. Hello. How are you? Greetings. <laughs> and all those good things. Hello. 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 Listen, you guys. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. Welcome to this crazy house with me, your illustrious host, the Minister of Soul, Khadija. Um, you guys, I'm really, really concerned um, that although I know that the number one nutcase um, has so-called lost the election, um, I also know that these people are the masters of trickology. That's what Elijah Muhammad said. The masters of trickology, trickology. So I really am not putting a lot of stock into anything. I just know that my high gears are not not up as high as they were, and I'm hoping, I'm I'm banking, I'm praying that the um, percentage of the American people that did not vote for Trump, because I just again can't believe over seventy percent. Uh, 70 million, over 70 million people did. I mean, that's just mind boggling to me. But, however, I don't want to keep, I don't want to stay there. I just want to make sure I say this. I don't think, you know, we throw the word narcissist around so loosely that a lot of people don't really understand what that entails. They don't even understand the concept. They just think it's a person that's full of themselves. And, yeah. But it goes, when you're malignant, and when you're, I mean, it, it goes so much deeper than what y'all think. Because a very general description can be a narcissist, you know, is a person that's just, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, full of they self, full of themselves, always saying me first, me first. Um, this is just on a generic scale, not pretty much worried about what anybody else thinks. And most people have just that definition. Most people never think about what a narcissistic injury means. Um, most people don't know that what kind of trauma can be invoked upon you by trying to stabilize or even be in a relationship with somebody that is this that's personality is this disordered. So Bear with me a little bit this morning while I try to um, give us some kind of roadmap to what we can look forward to with this psychopath that, that we've just supposedly kicked out of office. Now, a narcissistic injury, that's something that you don't want to do. Because if anybody that's really dealt with narcissism the way I have, they have this thing called a death stare. And uh, those of us who know what it looks like, um, it's nothing like it. It's it's like when you go to the movies and see a horror movie, and you find a person that's gonna kill you, kill the person in the movie, the way they see that person looking at them. If you can understand what I'm saying, it is the most bone chilling stare and look that you can possibly imagine. In fact, when I experienced that. I try to make myself limit my involvement with that individual as much as possible. I've come to recognize the narcissistic uh, injury and the stare that comes behind that. It's so empty. It's cold. It's like you can look in their eyes and lights on, nobody home. But it's an evil. It's an evil look. And so what you're dealing with is... um. Like, if to put it mildly, a narcissistic injury occurs when narcissists react negatively to perceived or real criticism, criticism or judgment, boundaries placed on them, and or attempts to hold them accountable for harmful behavior. Now, I want you to hear that one more time. When you talk about having, this is why I want you to know that Donald Trump is not going to go lightly into the sunset. I will be very surprised if he does. Because his 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 soul has been injured by these votes. He has had a um, 
blow to his ego that he's never experienced. Because just like the rest of the Republicans, everybody has always made excuses, allowed him to get away with it. That's why they're called personality disorder. Their personality is compromised. It can never go back to a normal way of being. The whole personality needs to be overhauled. And at 70, whatever old it is, it can't happen, right? It can't happen. You can't overhaul his personality right now and fix it. Okay. Now, what you got to understand is um, you know, the weaknesses of this person um, and those are the things that you have to go well me personally, I really do believe that Donald Trump is going to do something egregious, although he's out of office. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope to God I'm wrong. I don't want to be right. Um, I hope he doesn't have the codes. I, I've said that on many, many, many videos. And I can't believe that you stupid people would vote for a demagogue like this and put him in office. But however, here's where we at. America's on her last leg because Obviously, America has gone crazy. To even think that this represents um, what um, a, a, you know, not, it's not the boldness and the brashness that people are attracted to. They're they're fine with the lies. They're fine with him lying every other day. They're fine with him tweeting. At, at, there is nothing good comes out of that. You don't even let your kids do this kind of shit. But He's allowed to do this, and he has been allowed to do this because um, here are 11 ways that a narcissist uses to shame, uses shame to control others. Historical revisionism, see? Re confidence breaking. Exaggerating your faults. Victim card. Blame shifting. Baby talk, religious guilt. Now, most of these people have manipulated so much that, again, it's part of their normal, normalness. So when I come with this article from Christine Hammond, she's a licensed of uh, clinician um and she wrote an article about 11 ways narcissists use shame to control a weakness of a narcissist is their extreme hatred of being embarrassed there is nothing worse for them than having someone point out even the slightest fault ironically they have no problem opening Openly doing this to others. Now remember, they go crazy when you point out the slightest bit of fault. That's why Donald Trump cannot take responsibility for any damn thing he does. And he couldn't. This method of casting shame allows them to feel superior while minimizing any impact the other person might have. It also serves as a way of discounting any future comments the other person you may use to embarrass the narcissist. It, basically, they are beating the other person to the first punch. In order to avoid the first punch, a person needs to understand what it looks like. Here are 11 ways a narcissist uses shame to control others. Historical revision. A narcissist will retell another person's story, adding their own flair of additional shame. This can be done in front of others or privately. It usually happens after the other person has achieved some level of accomplishment. The narcissist will state that they are only trying to keep the other person humble. But in reality, they're trying to humiliate the person. Watch these behaviors. Confidence breaking. A narcissist loves to gather information about a person and store it away for later abuse. 
They use their charm to entice a person to share confidential details, especially ones that cause the other person embarrassment. Once gathered, the narcissist usually uses the story to keep the other person in check and constantly worried about when the information will come out. Listen to this. Exaggerating faults. No one is perfect except for the narcissist, right? Donald Trump. Everybody's wrong. All these years we've had elections. It's never been this messed up until he became president. It's never been this, uh, 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 how he said, fake until he came along. Uh, so none of this is ringing in y'all head as a red flag. This is sad how sick we are as a nation. This is a way of putting the other person in their place when confronted. They often say, <laughs> I was only joking. Or, oh, that person can't take a joke. Uh, oh, that was just locker room talk. I'll grab her by the pussy. And as soon as you confront him, oh, I was only joking, of course. That you can't take a joke. That's all that was, locker room talk. Narcissists are talented at exasperating others and then using their actions as justification for becoming a real victim. Regardless of how hard the narcissist incited the other person, the angry reaction to the pro provocation is viewed as shameful. The other person who usually feels bad by their reaction allows the narcissist to play the victim card and thereby surrenders control to the narcissist. Oh yeah, we got some problems and these enablers up there in the, in the White House. Shift, blame shifting. Whenever something goes wrong, the narcissist shifts all the blame to the other person. The other person who may have done uh, one thing wrong allows the narcissist to dump more and more and more and more of their fair share of the responsibility onto that person. In any narcissist relationship, now listen to this baby talk. The narcissist wants to be seen as the adult and the other person as a child. Damn. This belittlement is done in several condescending ways, such as literally talking down, calling the other person immature, and saying that the other person needs to grow up. The implication, implication is that the narcissist is more mature and has developed beyond the level of the other person. I mean, y'all are y'all following me? It doesn't matter what religion the narcissist or the other person is. In every religion, there's a set of standards and expectations. The narcissist will use the other person's religious beliefs to guilt them into acting a certain way. They might even go as far as to say, God told me that you need to. That's a lot of those black pastors. Well, I heard from God. And I said, you really need to work on your marriage. Or is your husband? Or get away from your wife. I heard from heaven. Now, y'all know I ain't lying. You know I'm not lying. Offensive play. The narcissist will use personal attacks to put the other person on the defense. A la Ilhan Omar. Rashida Talib. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, Ayanna Presley. The other person will get so caught up in defending their name or character that they will miss the next attack. Look how defensive you are. You must have done something. The narcissist will say, This is a checkmate position because the other person has nowhere to go. And but the reason why I mentioned those people, those individuals, is because they handle his aggression perfectly. Perfectly. Each one of the squad, in my opinion, that is. Talking above you. Instead of talking down, baby talk, the narcissist will talk over the other person's knowledge level. Even if the other person is more intelligent, the narcissist will talk in circles with an air of authority 
to force the other person into an inferior position. Okay, so this is how he running around that White House. You know, but, um, I, I mean, I can feel it. They will use sophisticated vocabulary, not in his case, uh, physical posturing, absolutely, such as looking down at the other person and embellishment of details to disguise the real point of shaming the other person. Kind of like the press conferences. Then they go to comparing other uh, their accomplishments. Like, I know business. If there's one thing I know, no one knows anything better than me. Uh, I'm very smart. Uh, I mean, come on. This is what y'all love. I cannot believe the American people are, are this, they're this messed up. I mean, that's why I know this is a sick pool, a sick place of a over 70 million people voted for this personality. Comparing accomplishment, it doesn't matter what the other person has accomplished. Has accomplished. The narcissist did it first, better, and more efficiently. By outpouring the other person, the narcissist minimizes the other person's accomplishments in comparison to their own. This produces an I can never be good enough feeling in the other person. A lot of y'all, I'm hitting home with y'all right now with some of these behaviors, and you might recognize them in yourself. Doesn't mean you a full blown narcissist because a lot of us have narcissistic traits. It's on a continuum. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, you, you know, if, if you take a bar and you put the zero in the middle and you go one, two, three, four, five, six positive. And then on the other left hand side of the bar, you go negative one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. That's how a, that's how a, 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 a chart would look if you're trying to deal with somebody and acknowledge how far is this narcissism going. OK. Um, and because it's on the continuum. You have to really, really look at how deep the negative. Uh, behaviors. Of this person um, that that jumps out is it is it extremely harmful, or is it just a person that just likes to drive a new fancy car? You got to have the latest car. You got to have this. I mean, you got to run it a meal, a hardware store type of narcissist. We all have them. We all have some of those characteristics. Okay, so that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about somebody that push the button. And because I can't have my way, all of y'all get fucked up. All of y'all die if I can't get what I want. I'll kill all of y'all. And y'all don't even get it. A narcissist is very aware of how they look and appear to others. Frequently, they are dressed in designer clothing with immaculate grooming. A hair is never out of place. This is not just for the narcissist. Rather, the perfectionist appearance is used to demean others. It's not just for the narcissist, but rather the perfectionist appearance is used to demean others. Comments like, they don't take care of themselves, or it doesn't take a lot of effort to look better, are typical. When a person can see a punch coming, it's easier to dodge. Resist the temptation to attack first. With the narcissist, that will only intensify their reaction. Instead, deflect, distract. But you have to defend, but you need to avoid, and you're doing that to avoid becoming a target. Okay? Now, are going to be subjected to Don, Donald Trump's injury. So as far as a lot of people saying, you know, y'all so happy, you know, and silly that Donald Trump won, you rejoice it. No, I'm rejoicing that I don't have to see the mad man every day. However, I'm frightened. I'm frightened. Because I know the capabilities of somebody like that, that has no soul. That has a black heart. 
and really gives a damn about nothing, has no problem selling out, compromising the institution of America, democracy, or nothing else. Donald Trump has been demoted to a kind of person that you only use his name because his name is famous. He's become one of those type of buffoons. And those of y'all who believed he was so rich and he uh, amassed this empire, no, it's what his daddy gave him and what he screwed off all his daddy's money. If any one of y'all would have did that, y'all be considered a loser. A loser. But because you're under this spell, it's a demonic spell that you're under, that um, somebody like this will become your hero. I don't care about none of the stuff about the but just the mental illness aspect of the whole thing. Okay? I'm not here to debate whether he was gonna do something for the platinum plan, all that stupid crazy madness. I'ma show you my plan because I know you got this platinum plan and you can introduce it to this into your plan. All that's dumb and stupid when you're dealing with a person. was absolutely insane. Now, you can take it or leave it alone. That being said, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, share. And I'll see y'all in the next video.